Hey guys, it's Matt down in Philly today because we're about to go look at a 50 unit property that's going to be a great buy and hold for our portfolio. I'm really excited about this deal because I've already done my homework from my desk, which you guys need to do before you go out and look at property. You got to do some homework. That includes underwriting the property, running your numbers on the deal, looking at the neighborhood through you know Google Maps or whatever it is that may that you want to use to determine if the area is right and if the numbers are right on this property basis. Your underwriting, the numbers that you would apply to it. Once the deal qualifies by those two things, then you're able to go out and see it in the field. And that's here. That's where we are today. The three things that I'm going to look at when I'm at this property, there's three primary points of focus that I'm going to keep in mind when I'm looking at this building that I really want to uncover to determine if it's an opportunity that I really want to make an offer on. Here's number one, capital expenses. Capital expenses are things that are, it's work that you do to a property. It could be major work like replacing the roof could be not so major work like repainting the common areas, but the reason they call them capital expenditures is they're not just regular expense for day-to-day -day operations of the building. They're things that add to the longevity and the value of the property. So you want to look for capital expenditures. Ask questions like, when's the last time you replaced the roof? How old is that plumbing? How old is that furnace in there? Things like that, because replacing that furnace, replacing that plumbing, replacing that roof, replacing those windows are all things that you're gonna need to do over time. Now, you're gonna set aside money every year, as you should have a little savings account, as we've talked about before in other posts, about uh, just setting aside some cash each year uh, for your property so you can afford to replace that roof when it needs to be replaced. So that's number one. Look for the capital expenditures that you need to budget for to do either right when you buy the place or set aside money every year to take on in year three, four, five down the road. That's number one. Number two, you want to look for opportunities to reposition the property in the market that it's in. The deal that we're looking at, there's a wave of redevelopment and all kinds of neat stuff and all kinds of, you know, restaurants and, you know, uh, new new uh, initiatives are coming into the neighborhood. It's also on the cusp of an area that's not so great. So our desire, obviously, is to see how I can position the property to where the people that want to be a part of that new movement want to be a part of this building because the rents are obviously higher and it obviously increases the value for the building to get it to be positioned in that redevelopment and the... Um, the rebirth of the neighborhood that it's in, right? So that's the, you, the way that you get there is you look at, say, okay, well, I'm gonna look at the unit size and what happens if I put in granite countertops? What happens if I see in these hardwood floors, if there's hardwood underneath this ugly carpet? If I peel that up and see on the hardwood floors and change the light fixtures and revamp the kitchens, can I increase the rents and are there other people in this marketplace that want to live in this neighborhood but not necessarily in this building and are willing to pay an extra 150 200 bucks a month to live in this building i don't know you got to look for ways that you can revamp and reposition the property other things that fall into that category are adding amenities is there an on-site laundry for 52 units you would think that there would be right there may not be if there is can i put that in so you look for things like that. You look for other ways to add value to the building, either by increasing rents and in positioning it into a, you know, for folks that want to be in this area, but maybe don't want to be in this building unless you do some nice upgrades to it or adding some things of value to the property, right? So that's number two, repositioning the building. Number three is ways to decrease expenses. So the biggest thing that I look at when I look at a building for that kind of thing is I look for ways to separate the heat. Uh, in our part of the world, being in the Northeast, for those of you that are in the southern parts of the country, uh, you may not have to look for those kinds of things like we do, but up here, heating expenses are very expensive. As you can see, I've got a big mound of snow next to me over here, and it's, uh, it's, it's a whopping 20 some degrees outside. So there are heat, there are heat, heating units that are running in these buildings and the bigger boilers and things like that to heat these big apartment complexes can be very inefficient. So you wanna try and find a way to get the heat onto the tenant's names, number one, because then they have to pay the bill as inside from you, the landlord. And secondly, a lot of these bigger units are just inefficient, they're old, um, they're, uh, they're, they're outdated, and so it's just a good way to have the building operate at a better efficiency level as well, and it gives it, to get rid of those old boilers and to get the heat into the tenant's names as well, because it'll, it'll make the building operate at a lower expense line, which is obviously uh, you know, more money in your pocket as well. It may, reflect in your rent, it may reflect in your rents too, but I have always found that tenants are willing to pay for the heat and those kinds of things if you're willing to give them other amenities. Going back to step number two, if you give them a nice kitchen, they'll pay for the heat. 
and they, and they have the money to do so, but they'll pay for that nice kitchen, those nice countertops, those kinds of things. If you do things to reposition the property, they'll gladly pay more utilities. So bear that in mind. Other ways you can reduce the expenses uh, in a property. I always, this sounds so simple, but people just don't think of it. I look at the toilets, right? There are uh, old three gallon toilets that you see in a lot of properties. That used to be the standard, was a toilet that every time you flush it, used three gallons of water. The new standards are much, much less than that. For a 52 unit building, can you imagine how much water this building is using if all those toilets are three gallon flush toilets? I can cut that back by a third to, uh, to put it on today's standards, and it's not that big of an investment. You can put in uh, water efficient shower heads. They don't, it, don't, it doesn't make the shower any less uh, effective, but it uses a lot less water. So there's ways to reduce water consumption in a building too. You look at the windows to see if, of course, if the landlord's paying the heat, you look at the, the building envelope to see how efficient it is. Those are ways that you can decrease the heating expenses if you want to continue to pay that or if you have to continue to pay that if it's just not practical to separate the heat because sometimes that's the case. Um, so those are the three things, guys. Capital expenditures, repositioning the building, lowering expenses. Those are the things that I'm gonna be looking at when I look at this property. I've already evaluated the rents. I did that from my desk. I looked at the, how the market rents compared to the, to the rents on the property. I don't need to have that conversation when I'm out. And here's a bonus. The last thing that I look at when I'm on this site is I try and bump into at least one tenant and just, oh hey, how are you? How do you like living here? And the agent hates it when you do that, but that's okay. I, I, I tend to try and get the tenant's take on the building. I was looking, just quick story, I was looking at one building um, that was a larger apartment complex. I bumped into a tenant and I asked him, hey, by the way, how much is your heat bill? Because I noticed that they had really old heat pumps in this building with really, really inefficient windows. So I just said, how much is your heating bill? And the guy says, you know, in the winter time, when it gets cold outside, my heat bill is $500 a month. What? That's what the guy told me. We did not buy that building because this was a large building. It would have been a lot of replacements of windows and heating units and things like that. It pays to bump into tenants and ask them. That's a little bonus question, okay? So here's your homework, guys. Make the list of questions before you go out when you go look at buildings. And number two, I've said this a few times, be sure you do some homework before you go into the field. Underwrite the numbers, look at the map, make sure the property even meets your requirements before you go and call the agent and schedule a showing. And when you do, have your list of questions and stuff like that written out before you go out into the field. So there it is, guys. Please leave some comments. Let's have a conversation going. I hope you enjoyed. Have a great day.